And I can't think of a more inspirational group of entrepreneurs to help kick off today's event. So let's meet these great entrepreneurial minds. Of course, on his left is Clint Greenleaf, excuse me. Clint is one of the few people who can lay claim to more bestsellers than Stephen King. Clint, of course, is the chairman and CEO of the Greenleaf Book Group, one of the nation's leading book distributors. Based in Austin, Texas, Greenleaf has represented more than 800 titles and was named to the Inc. 500 list in 2006 and the inaugural Inc. 5000 list this year. A published author himself, Clint is also no stranger to the stage. He regularly speaks at conferences and seminars across the country, and we're lucky to have him at ours. Clint, welcome. Great to see you. So to get started here today, my first question to all of you is, complete this sentence. I knew I made it when. Clint confessed to me earlier that uh, when he took the, uh, the stool here on stage, this was his aha moment. But uh, enlighten us on, on something from your, your more, more recent past. Well, I, I would also pair it back to Jack's comment that I'm not sure that I've really reached it yet, and I'm not sure what it is. But I think I'm going for it every day. Um, I know that a great day for me was when I realized I could take a week-long vacation and the office would run well enough without me. Um, <laughs> yeah, about that, it ran a hell of a lot better when I was not there. So <laughs> I don't know what that How really familiar does that sound to any of you? Um, I think, in, I guess my ultimate goal is to be able to coach my kids' little league teams and be able to do that sort of thing. I have a five-month-old, so I've got a long way to go before I can even start. But that's really what I'm shooting for, and I think if I can build a company and build a workforce that they can do the same thing, they can take time off and do what's important, um, and run a profitable company. I, I got started as an accountant. Uh, I didn't spend much time as an accountant, but I did get started as an accountant. Um, and I didn't know what EBITDA was, but I didn't know how to get it. <laughs> so, you know, we, we've been lucky, and uh, we've been profitable every month for about five years now, uh, and that's important to us. And you're actually, just to jump in, you're doing something cool with uh, Inc. 500 CEOs uh, interested in, in doing a book, is that right? Right, we launched Inc. 500 Press and Inc. 5000 Press. Um, go into that at the ex exhibition area, but it's a neat chance for people to encapsulate their stories and turn it into book form. So if you're interested, make sure you, you talk to Clint after. What about you? I think certain parts get easier and certain parts get a lot more complicated. Um, I remember the first time I wrote a check for a six-figure check. And I thought, wow, this is so cool. I'm so great. I thought, oh my God, they're going to cash this. And then <laughs> I don't want to let go of this. And you know, you hire a bunch of people and you look around, and you're like, wow, they all work for me. You know, this is fantastic. And then you think, I got to pay every single one of them. And we have to talk often enough to find out what's going on with their lives. And there's new challenges that you find every time. So certain things get easier. Um, some things get easier. And there's always a new challenge down the road, whether it's standing up in front of a lot of brilliant people and pretending that we know more than you guys do, um, which I think we're trying to do. But, um, <laughs> and there's always something new down, down the line. Now, Clint, we were talking last night about you know, management in general. And, and you, you mentioned to me that uh, you really have to, as an as a entrepreneur, aggressively hire the right people. And don't be afraid to fire the wrong people. Elaborate. I think uh, a lot of people in this room can relate to the idea that firing is not a whole lot of fun. Um, I absolutely hate it, and my stomach is in knots when I have to do it. But we at our company decided a long time ago that being quick to fire the wrong people, when you know someone's wrong, fire them as soon as you possibly can, is the best thing in the world. And, and I, I had a real problem with that, because I, I, I used to always say, you know what, I'll get to it later, I'll get to it later. And we had so many times when we had an employee who we knew was wrong, and we knew was not a good fit. And we can always come up with some sort of you know, halfway answer on why we should keep them. Well, it's a Thursday, and you can't fire anybody on a Thursday, and then on a Friday. Well, maybe Mondays are better days. And, and then you come, oh, well, you know, his, his wife's anniversary of her company is soon. We don't want to do that. You can always find a good excuse. But when someone is a wrong fit, the best thing you can do for you, for that person, for the other employees, is to get rid of them. And it's hard, but... So how do, how do you do... I mean, it, as you mentioned, and I've talked to many entrepreneurs about this, this is a nightmare for them, especially when you've got a company, maybe 10 employees, they were all there from the beginning, and it's just not working out. It becomes personal. What, what's your technique? We're utterly honest. Uh, we like to practice what we call the Band-Aid principle. And we just try and rip it off like a Band-Aid. There's a great Seinfeld line where he says, rip it off. And, and 
At the same kind of idea. We just we come up and we say, hey, look, you know, this is not working. For whatever reason, you and, and we are not a good fit, and we hope that you can find a good fit. You've got to channel your inner, inner Donald Trump. That's right. <laughs>